when it comes to systemic racism in the real estate industry, all these firms are guilty of it. As an African-American agent, I've seen it throughout my whole career. You can have somebody call a company, a seller, and they're like, hey, I'm calling you guys. I have an apartment and I'm on Central Park West and the last one in my building, it sold for about 12 million. Mine, I have a lot of upgrades. I've done about $4 million in upgrades. I know I can get probably upwards of, of 15 to 16 million for my place. Do you have any agents that can help me with selling my home? They'll say, yeah, yeah, sure. We have tons of agents that can help you. Hold on, we'll pair you. We'll just ask a couple more questions and then we'll pair you with a great agent. And then they will not reach out to an African-American agent to sell the property. They will not do that. That's why it's called systemic racism. Because the system has been structured that way. It's the norm. Even like you have these white teams all across the nation that don't have African-American agents on their real estate team. But the reality of it is, I'm not even upset with them because of that. They didn't create those rules. The system created that rule. They actually came into a system and just followed the protocol. They can change it, but what's the necessity for them to change it if nobody's speaking up about it? And then it transcends into the TV shows, which is why I call out Bravo, I call out HGTV and all these shows. You don't have any people of color on your shows as a prime cast member, unless they're servicing like an African-American community or like a area where it's a lot of African-Americans concentrated. You don't see people like me who have a proven track record within these successful arenas. Like Frederick Eklund, they've showed my places before. Ryan Serhan, I beat him out of listings from certain owners and I have a proven track record, so why am I not deserving of getting the same things? It's not like I'm asking for a handout, but the reality of it is I have to work 10 times harder to get a fraction of what everybody else is getting spoon-fed. You see the sectors, how it's controlled? They act like it's the norm. It's so normal to them, they don't even notice it. I'll give you an example of, okay, you're listening to me talking now. I've been talking for about two, three minutes. How many times did you blink while I was talking? You don't even know how many times you blink because you don't even pay attention to it. That's how systemic racism is in the real estate industry. You don't even notice it, that it's part of your actions because it's the norm. It's like blinking. The racism runs deep in the real estate industry. Like I'm always asked, like, hey, have you ever had a situation where you experienced a racist encounter, like pretty much head on? I remember the time in the beginning of my career in Soho, I was going to an open house and I got there before my client for, a, it was probably like a $2 million apartment in Soho. Nice building right across from Jack's wife, Frida, on Lafayette. And other people are in the open house, people are moving around and I'm there waiting, my client's on their way. And the agent sees me that's hosting the open house representing the listing, a white agent. And she comes up to me and says, hey, do you mind leaving your briefcase? She didn't want me to walk around the house with my briefcase under the assumption that I may try to put something or take something from the house and put it in my briefcase. So yeah, I was actually appalled by that. It's actually interesting. I've been in the business so long that I can't even remember who that agent is, but it'll be interesting because I'm pretty sure that she's probably still in the business and I probably have a great interaction with her and I don't even remember that it's her. Yeah, like I said, racism runs very deep in real estate and a lot of industries.